So Lilith just announced an all new War of the Ruins event, which promises to be an eight player battle royale what's going on guys cheers first we got champions of olympia which is basically like domination in call of duty and then we got the tempest clash event which I, I, is that in the game still i don't even does anyone play that i have no idea and now we have what appears to be a battle royale the kids love battle royale games these days boys and girls okay so of course we gotta add a battle royale so obviously we just got this update in the uh inbox of all the governors playing the game here and it looks like update 57 is called museum of wonders because there's going to be a museum day event series and they also announced a new commander coming to the game I, well we're gonna talk about that in a second so i'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on the information contained in this update just like probably every other rise of kingdoms youtuber here on the platform but before we do that uh did you guys notice this is a new camera it's like it's a completely different camera than the one like this is this is the this is the old one i've been using okay it's a 4k webcam but this is actually a mirrorless uh sony a6400 i'm borrowing it from my roommate so shout out to jp if you're watching but let me know in the comments does it look better this is like a really expensive camera and i don't want to actually buy one myself if it if you didn't even notice and also like 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed so um if you want me to like be able to afford food and stuff uh go ahead and hit the sub button down below okay so the museum day event series basically it's going to be a seven day event where you complete quests you get rewards okay and we're celebrating a museum day I don't really know what that is but I think that we did this last year as well but it looks like the precious pottery portion of the event is going to be uh you know where you and your alliance all contribute to the same sort of goal which is going to be cool and uh it looks like you can receive rewards including an epic city theme choice chest so that's pretty cool if there is an epic city theme that you don't have that you want to get um it says number one collector I don't know if that means like if it's going to be ranked like whoever donates the most in your alliance uh gets the most amount of rewards for example and then it decreases from there I don't really know how you could do that with an epic city theme choice chest I I, don't, I really have no clue like it would have to be like top 10 or something get the chest because it's either you get it or you don't it's not like sculptures where like you can get varied amounts of them so I don't know how that's gonna work they probably included this in, in events before and I just completely forgot about it but um it looks like we're gonna have the parchment map event again where it's basically you're gonna have to go send a scout to a particular portion on the map that's always kind of cool we have race against time we've seen that before as well so this is gonna come within two weeks of the update this stuff is this is pretty boring okay this is the, this is like the stuff that like you know we've seen these these types of events before it's not that big of a deal but this this is a big deal okay the all new war of the ruins event so on the ruins oh let me, let me put on my uh let me put on my announcer voice <clears throat> on the ruins of an ancient battleground the sandstorm blows fierce here warriors of many kingdoms gather crossing earth scorched by the fires of war recruiting mercenaries to fight for the ultimate glory i i am pogging so hard right now okay uh, so here are the rules okay eight governors will enter the war of the ruins battlefield solo each selecting one troop to do battle with so this is not going to be something that you can probably play with your alliance mates right because as a sort of battle royale style game mode uh if you had an ally that would just be like not fair because then you're just going to team up on everybody else who's random queuing so that makes sense this is going to be a solo event mercenaries will appear on the battlefield lead your troops towards them to recruit them and gain more units defeating other governors troops will allow you to recruit their soldiers into your troop so it looks like you're going to have probably one army you're going to pick your troop composition and everyone's going to pick go on cpo right i mean let's be real and then perhaps in the open field you're going to see something like a nevsky saladin or something as a mercenary and then you'll be able to recruit it now this will be interesting depending on how big the map is because uh if you can recruit more mercenaries than the enemy team you might just have more armies in this game mode so it actually might be better to play with a commander that has a fast march speed because then the faster you can get to those mercenaries the more armies you're going to have and it doesn't really matter how good your one army will be at the beginning if you're going up against somebody who has three or four armies hitting into you it's gg okay so that's gonna be really interesting um next it says troops on the battlefield will periodically be granted a random skill this is interesting so with the random nature of this skill it could probably change how the outcome goes right which 
you know from a strategic perspective sounds like it kind of sucks because it's just like oh well how can i guarantee i'm gonna win if the game could be dictated randomly by whoever gets the best skill which i understand that criticism but also um this could help the free to play and low spenders actually compete against some of the whales who have maybe just better armies right that's something that to to keep in mind right if, if there's a super powerful skill and it goes to a free-to-play player well maybe now they actually have a chance at winning that event whereas otherwise they may not have so this will be interesting depending on how powerful they are and how much it actually influences the outcome of the event um but it could be good it, it, i'm not gonna hate on that just yet even though it is random and it reduces the probability that you can guarantee a victory uh, the battlefield is a harsh mistress Ooh, no maidens no we do have it we have a mistress here okay the fires of war will approach the center of the map dealing continuous damage to troops caught in the choking sand and dust the last troop left standing will be victorious then it says something here that you have to like go to the app store to download the latest update I already checked the app store it's not there right now obviously because this update's not out yet but i don't know why you would have to like go to the app store just to play this event i'm not really sure what the deal is there but yes the fires of war are basically the ring okay the map is going to reduce in size over time and that's going to force players to interact with each other near the center of the map just like every other battle royale now this is interesting because it's only eight players right so when you think of a battle royale you typically think of you know a, a ton of players um i'm wondering if they're worried about queue times for bigger bigger events like if they put, put like 50 players um you know how is lag gonna work um how are how long will you have to wait to get 50 players into a single map like you might have to wait like 10 minutes and people aren't going to be interested in doing that so i don't know but if this event is successful i can see them tweaking it to maybe add a Add more players right maybe you can play an eight player war of the ruins and then in the future maybe you could do a 30 player war of the ruins that would be kind of cool um also they don't make any uh, mention of rewards here like what what do you get for being victorious um is it the same rewards every time you come in first place or do you you know or is it like champions of olympia or um or the tempest clash where you just you have like a weekly reward where you, you just have to play enough to get those rewards and then every victory after that is just you get nothing that'll be interesting to see as well so i'm excited to see this event um, i think that the champions of olympia hasn't been that popular tempest clash hasn't been that popular so this looks like their third attempt at adding a you know a, a solo game mode where you can fight other players without it being kvk um so it's interesting i'm happy that they're trying to innovate and bring new uh bring new events into the game i'm wondering if they're like hitting the, like the developers i'm wondering if they're brushing up against the limits of the game engine because the rise of kingdoms engine is uh it's pretty simple okay i mean we're looking at it from a it's like a two and a half d perspective right like it's not quite 3d because i can't like you know look at all sides of my castle but i can see multiple sides of certain things like the, the barbarians and stuff the commanders have movement and they're obviously 3d but i like i don't know what harold's uh harold's booty looks like you know so so i'm wondering if they're really pushing up against those limits and i wonder how that's going to affect the game as it evolves over time anyway let's take a look at the lost kingdom optimizations looks like this is an update to season one called endless war number of kingdoms in a season changed from eight to four with a new map providing a brand new gameplay experience so that's going to be really interesting i'm wondering if this means they're going to slow down the implementation of new kingdoms right because you know maybe it, they don't want to have they don't want to have to wait for eight new kingdoms to come into the game and so they're going to lower this to four and then just slow the uh the addition of servers which i think the game has needed for a long time but that's just speculation maybe that's not why they're doing this i don't know um all new kingdom technologies can grant powerful buffs to kingdoms in development and in battle so this is going to be really interesting perhaps if you're a free-to-play player um and you know this kingdom technology in kvk1 gives you a lot of development bonus perhaps you don't have to fight in that kvk but you could just use that as a time to really push technology and really get your city hall up there um so it'll be beneficial for everybody a new arena events slay barbarians within within the time limit and challenge chieftain lohar to win a bountiful rewards for yourself and other kingdom members so this i know previously they have mentioned that they wanted to change up how lohar sort of works in the game perhaps this is how they're going to do that they're going to implement lohar as an event um or this could just be something else entirely um we'll send a notification to kingdoms who are about to enter endless war after the update has gone online uh season of conquest story heroic anthem power up pioneer event launch okay kingdoms currently in season of conquest have the chance to be the first to play the all-new heroic anthem power up story 
as a pioneer event governor taking part in the pioneer event will gain pioneer rewards and participant rewards on top of standard rewards okay that's great um so all new range combat story exclusive commanders can command siege units to build arrow towers allowing you to attack enemy troops from long distances story exclusive commanders can only be used as part of this story and will be removed when the story ends so what i think they're talking about here is choose a story right they're talking about a new heroic anthem it's gonna uh, apparently it's gonna be called heroic anthem power up i don't know what it is with them adding p to things that are already in the game um but just call it something else i don't I, why are you calling it heroic anthem power up am i misunderstanding this is this not a new kvk format it, it sounds like a new kvk format but i i don't know um but what's interesting here is story exclusive commanders does that mean that we're getting like commanders that you can only use in this kvk and if that's the case how does starring them up work how does leveling them up work if you level them up to 60 and then kvk is over and then you play that kvk again will they start at level 60 or will you have to invest in them again um that's something that is interesting to me i know that a lot of the late game old players have tons of experience tombs saved up tons of you know purple gold stars saved up and they could just use this and every single kvk just get a new commander to 60 and it, it wouldn't even matter because they just have so much saved um but i wouldn't like to see that i would i would like to see it stay but who knows okay also it looks like they're actually giving you a use for siege units so good job lilith we've needed uh, a war reason to use siege so i'm happy to see that and it's also for a new mechanic an arrow tower which obviously we've seen in other game modes but um but having it in kvk is going to be interesting new troop blockade feature while marching friendly troops can pass freely but non-friendly troops will not be able to pass when blockaded so that's going to be like i guess building your own pass right like that's how passes work if you're friendly you can walk through the pass if you're not you can't um so it looks like you you will be able to build a blockade so how big this blockade will be is yet to be known um how they'll you'll probably have to rally it to take it down so that'll be really interesting and in how that mechanic will work i'm sure somebody will try to abuse that mechanic um so i can't wait to find that out like what if you build a blockade like right in like mountains so that way the enemies can't build a flag close enough to rally it i don't know that's just a that that's just me like off the top brainstorming about how people are going to abuse that um, but but they probably thought about that already so anyway new coalition diplomacy system improved uh, system for relations between coalitions okay great new alliance arrow towers crusader flags can be turned into alliance arrow towers which automatically attack nearby non-friendly cities so that's going to be really cool so I'm wondering if if the way that you build an arrow tower like okay so I'm starting to understand now it sounds like the story exclusive commander is going to be a siege commander that is used specifically for converting con uh, crusader flags into arrow towers which I'm assuming will have a circular AoE and it will automatically damage some number of targets that enter it um that'll be really cool I'm again just curious to see how this works actually in game improvements to the desert Con I forgot desert conquest was a thing to be honest with you added a new fortress management screen allowing you to more letting allowing you to more manage your fortress uh, fortress quickly and easily cool new dispatch and recall feature allowing you to return dispatch troops and improved user experience for fortresses okay great um other improvements when a city's location becomes part of enemy territory during lost kingdom it will be automatically teleported back to its starting province so that is really interesting okay obviously you know this doesn't prevent you from zeroing enemy players who are offline because you can rally them once the once their territory is gone but if you happen to build into that territory without zeroing them um then they get teleported away so you're going to want to zero players before you build territory underneath them um which i mean i guess if you don't care about zeroing them you could just build and that'll immediately free up space this uh, kind of makes sense because you know if you have a really active kingdom you can really fill a lot of space with bubbled cities right you really can occupy a map and make it very difficult for people to move through an area so i guess that's why they're implementing this um i don't really know how i feel about it but you know it is what it is alliance fortresses cannot be built in king's land during lost kingdom okay okay so that's interesting fortresses do take a long time to take down so it makes uh it makes some sense here new coalition marker feature main alliance members and coalition leaders can place markers visible to other coalition members 
on the map so that's pretty cool um other optimizations new commander filtering system allowing you to filter commanders according to the unit type or specialty this actually i've wanted for a while just like as a content creator I, like if i want to go through all the archer commanders i'm like wait a minute who's and then you know i have to look through so this is actually kind of cool um i don't know if other people care about that but i do change conditions for obtaining or scrapping beginners immigration items um this is just for new players who really cares about this newly created characters will not be able to obtain beginners immigration items if not in the preparation season unused beginner immigration items will be scrapped once your city hall reaches eight I'm pretty sure that's how it was before oh this isn't teleports this is immigration items okay whatever the season of conquest bundles conquerors will mountain warfare and battle of the peaks will only be visible to governors whose city hall has reached 25. I mean I guess that's good right it would suck if a new player bought these bundles when they could have actually gotten a bundle that would have given them more value so I'm happy to see that improved graphics for the trial of a Kokaro event sick I don't know what was wrong with that because I haven't gotten a chance to play it yet but anyway this is uh you know I guess gonna be a bigger update than I initially expected I thought this next update coming out of the coming for the game would be more passive and then once summer hits they would drop a big civilization and uh make a really big update but this update looks pretty big as well so this is going to be interesting i'm uh i'm happy to see some more innovation coming to the game hopefully this new um sort of battle royale style gameplay is uh is fun and better than other um events similar to it like the uh champions of olympia uh and we're finally getting a siege commander that's going to be really really interesting i am interested to see what these see this the i mean it says store exclusive commanders that means multiple right so I'm interested to see how these uh these siege unit commanders um actually operate are they going to be OP do they reset every time KVK comes around I don't know but when I get more information I'm sure I'll talk about it in a video what am I doing here guys if you enjoyed this video or found it informative or entertaining or anything like that drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel in the algorithm if you're new here go ahead and subscribe to the channel I'm sure lots of you guys think you're sub but you're not so go ahead and check comment your thoughts down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon Peace.